Good morning, folks. Hopefully you caught last night's video on safe zones in the disaster, animal signs, and more. Today, the sun is starting to look more like sunspot maximum, so let's begin there. And we are going to use the 193 angstrom view of the sun. Coronal hole up north, leading the longitudinal edge of the bright active regions. The ones on the north are trying to develop sunspots, and we'll zoom in here again on those bright areas. Number of ejections off the limbs and on the north at the end, a little pop of it trying to produce. The x-ray flaring is slowly creeping back up as the southern spots are still growing and are starting to develop an in-step morphology of the central umbra, even if only small for now and not offering high flare risk magnetism as of this morning. Quick peek at the solar wind shows all is quiet, both in the plasma stream and geomagnetically. Quick aesthetic piece here as Sophia has offered one of the best images of a star forming region. This is RCW 49 in Westerland, gorgeous shot of the stellar nursery here. Let's next hit three stories that flow into one another. First, it is another look at how the sun's current sheet interacts with the Earth's magnetic field and offering yet another mechanism for its disruption of our global system. This is of course always scalable up to the galactic current sheet impact on the sun advanced catastrophism principles, and the quote squeeze as it passes may be the trigger to release the accumulated coronal shell, which comes during the galactic magnetic reversal point within the sheet. Hopefully our short-term memories are solid as more evidence for a massive deposition at the Younger Dryas is found. Here it is key for observers to remember two things. First, that all of the impactor evidence can be produced by that great solar flash as well, and second, that the solar micronova produces impactors in three separate ways, asteroidal push, plasma congealing, and in the arc discharge. In the disaster series, I beg you guys to watch all of the time. The solar micronova video explains that evidence and how an impactor only event cannot explain all the evidence. We also go over the lab studies in the impactor cycle video, showing how it works the ground when it strikes. Part of this entire process is the ongoing magnetic change throughout the solar system, the sun, and the planets. Here we add another one to the overall changing field of Earth, the weather anomalies, the critical frequency, and polar summer mesospheric echo anomalies. Chorus waves are not a new item of study. They have well-expected patterns and follow strict rules, until they don't. Reversal of the falling frequency sweep, as simply put as possible, they're noticing even more changes that aren't supposed to be seen, up there at the top of the world. Last but not least, check out that video from last night if you missed it. Check out the playlist if you need a foundation or a review of those topics we hit today. And our book on the disaster, The Next End of the World, is available at spaceweathernews.square.site. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.